Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Cosmic Perspective. On today's episode, I have my roommate Joey come on, and we talk about something near and dear to us. So without further ado, I'll jump right into it. Thanks, Joey. Thanks for coming on. Yes, sir. Really Pleasure. appreciate it. Um, so one of the things that, that Joey and I both really really bond over is uh our meditative practice and it's something that both of us found independently before you know we knew each other we both were meditators and uh coming into a household where that's like the common practice that both of us do it every day certainly makes it easier uh and i think trying to do meditation in isolation uh without somebody else who can kind of help you if you ever feel like you're getting stuck yeah it's uh, nice to talk to people about your practice see yeah what they go through because everyone Everyone struggles with meditation, I think, at the beginning, definitely. But Without we were just doubt. talking about before the podcast, we are like, yeah, it gets easier. You know, if you're doing it every day, it's like you can find that Zen point a lot faster than, you know, definitely in the first time you ever meditate. Yeah, it's, it's way easier to just tap into uh, the ultimate, almost nothing state mind. Um, it, it's easier to do it when you're doing it every day because not every meditation session is like that, right? And I think that's something that beginning meditators certainly feel anxiety about where they're like, man, you know, I feel like I'm not doing it right. Almost every other second, my mind's going somewhere. And the reality is, is that's normal. The It's never gonna stop doing that. So the only way to truly get there is for you to acknowledge when it's happening and bring yourself back to your breath or whatever you happen to be focusing on at the time. And I think that's that's a clear distinction that I know that I've been learning a lot lately is just understanding that me recognizing that my mind just wandered is the meditative practice. That's the whole point. It's oh, yeah. just being mindful of when it's happening. Yeah, no, that definitely is. And I think, yeah, you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. Like I said, you'll get better at it. But I think, yeah, the key practices is just learning to control your focus, control your brain. I mean, because I think meditation itself is – it's not a loaded word, but I mean, it, once again, it's just a word that, you know, doesn't, you know, no word perfectly describes anything. So I guess there's a lot of different philosophies of meditation and a lot of different ways you could meditate. But um, I think the primary thing is like you're learning to control your mind. And so usually it's focusing on breath or the sounds or, you know, just being building awareness mm-hmm. and realizing when you uh, when you're going I wouldn't say unaware, but yeah, when your mind drifts off to, you know, you know, the things you're worried about that day or yeah. some interaction you had the other day that you're self-conscious about of like, oh God, did I say the right thing? Yeah. When you go down those rabbit holes, um, it's easy to get lost literally for several minutes at a time where you don't even realize that you just let your brain go down that route. Oh yeah. And I mean, I, I've been meditating like consistently for almost two years it's probably been like a year and a half where i've been pretty good like meditating every day like that's just like what i do i don't even have to think but before Mm -hmm. that i was like dabbling in it for the past probably five years i'd meditate and then i wouldn't for a couple months but i was thinking like you know i'd catch myself because meditation kind of builds mindfulness throughout the rest of the day where you i wouldn't say you're meditating when you're walking down the street but if you can be mindful and aware of your thoughts that is some form of meditation but i always thought back to like you know before i was even enlightened to those ideas it's like was my mind just like running gambit all day, like doing whatever it wants. And yeah. just like, how many times do you get trapped in like negative thought loops or just think like, you know, you're not aware of what your brain's doing. You're not conscious of the fact that, you know, you're just indulging in these horrible thought cycles of patterns. thoughts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the patterns of thinking that we often find ourselves in where we don't realize that it really is just the momentum of the pattern of thinking. It's not that we actually feel that way, but people often identify with their thoughts and feelings as if every single thought that comes into their head is like, yep, this is mine and I own it. And that's you giving life to these thoughts. But there's a lot of power in not giving life to thoughts that aren't useful to you. And just because your your brain thinks it doesn't mean you really believe it. It just, the brain thinks, that's what it does. That's It's, it's just constantly gonna be doing that. And for you to be able to selectively choose when you want to tune into them and when you're like, you know what, there's actually some good insight in that thought. I'll give some life to that one. And then there's some other things that are just not helpful thoughts, right? The voices in your head as big Sean refers to on his album, you know, where it's just like half the time I can't tell whether that voice is for me or against me, you know? And, and I think a lot of people run into that where their mind is their biggest enemy and mindfulness and meditation allows you to 
notice that and realize when it's being your ally and when it's not. And uh, you don't even want to judge the thoughts in that way when you're meditating in particular. But when you're just not, when you're not meditating, we're just trying to be mindful of your thoughts. It is helpful to identify them and be like, oh, no, that's probably not a useful thought. I'm going to just let that one go. Yeah, definitely. And that's something I've gotten into recently was I heard it a lot, but I hadn't applied it. But people would always say, you know, there's only there's only two types of feelings. There's uh, love and fear. And that's the basis of the whole universe. That's yin and yang. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of, you know, I, I took that to heart and I was like, all right, so there there's fear based thoughts. And that's what you're talking about thoughts that don't serve you that are negative so what i've been working on through meditation is you know just analyzing a thought because you can feel it you know there's a there's a good thought you have a good thought oh today's gonna be a good day that's a positive that's a good thought i would indulge in those thoughts i'd create more of those thoughts and then there's negative thoughts and it's like oh it isn't gonna work out Uh, she's not gonna call me back this or that all thoughts are imaginary right but the ones that serve you are the ones that are empowering and positive and i would argue that the ones that don't serve you are all based around the same thing which is fear so if you can analyze that you can basically like you know x out those fear thoughts as they come into mind and the mm-hmm. way that i do it is you know there's fear and love so if you apply the idea of love to it most of the time you know it's an imaginary thought there it is a yin and yang so you're having the thought of oh man i'm I'm going to be late for work. They're going to fire me. It's like, that's an imaginary thought. You could easily take the the opposite thought, which is, oh, it's going to be fine. They're going to be understanding. They're going to accept my excuse. Like those are two, you know, you have two choices. One serves you and one does a disservice to you. And logically, like the one that's doing a disservice to you, n- neither of them changed the outcome, but the positive thought could change the way you react to it. The negative thought can negatively affect the way you're going to react to it so i'm just always trying to indulge only the happy thoughts <laughs> yeah whatever, but it, it yeah. no it's really true because when you're when you're going through your day-to-day life you're going to have thoughts that you that are going to be about the things that you're doing and if the things that you're doing are things that you don't enjoy then in general those thoughts are going to skew negative but if you're mindful of them even if it's something you don't enjoy that much then you can use that power of of the knowledge that these ideas and thoughts are really just associated with your negative feelings about the thing that you're doing that maybe you're just not a big fan of. Uh, It it gives them less power. It takes the power away from them, and it allows you to empower yourself to maybe find some sort of positive angle within an otherwise maybe generally negative situation or circumstance. Yeah, and I mean, I think to me it's like I think a lot of people forget that like you know, you do control your brain, so you can generate positive thoughts or negative thoughts whenever you want, but you can really make the distinction once you're aware of it. And I think a lot of people, most people probably walk throughout the day. And if you're not aware of that, then you're having good thoughts and you're having bad thoughts and you're having highs and lows all day long. Whereas if, you know, you set out at the beginning of that day, you meditate and you do some mantras and you're saying like, I'm going to focus on positive thoughts and this, and all day you're really aware of staying focused on the pot i would argue that you're gonna have a better day and you're gonna have a more positive day and more positively affect people meanwhile you know if you didn't do that you might not have a bad day but you know there's probably highs and lows into it yeah that you can control peaks that you could achieve with that that beginning so i actually want to really highlight that because this is something that you personally have affected me on um is doing the meditation first thing in the morning and one of your best arguments that you ever made and was one of the things that really can like convinced me personally that I'm like, you're right, I should do it in the morning. Because I, I used to have my practice where the main time I would meditate would be I would go to the gym, I'd come back, and usually after my shower, uh, as part of kind of like also cooling down from the shower a little bit would be that I would just meditate for a good 15 or 20 minutes. However, I found that sometimes um, my plan for the day made made it seem like, and I know it's, you always can really find time for it, but it made it feel like, oh, I might not have time to to just sit here for 15 minutes when I know I got to do this, that, and the other thing before such and such time, you know, if I got to go to work at four or something like that. Um, And when you do it first thing in the morning, you have the entire day ahead of you, which allows you to, um, no matter what you're doing in the beginning, it doesn't matter um, how much time you think you might lose because you end up losing time over the course of the day through inefficiency of whatever your actions and your path is. And so what I find is if I do it in the beginning of the day, you know, then that just course corrects the amount of time I can do other things later. And I become then more mindful 
of uh, my inefficiency in going from one task to another. Whereas if I didn't do it in the morning, then that's one more thing I got to add in where I might have already now lost half an hour's worth of time from transitioning from several tasks and travel time of going to the gym and all these other things that as the day goes on, you're losing more and more time. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think it's just, for me, it just made sense to do it first thing in the morning because it does give you a clearness to go about the day afterwards. Like when you finally open your eyes after that 15 or 20 minutes and you're refreshed, I'm just like, for me, it's a good way to set up the beginning of the day. And then it's like, oh, let's get after it. I got, you know, I got focus. I got a fresh outlook on things. Also, I think it's almost like a cheat in a way that, you know, if you meditate within like the first 15 minutes of waking up, I feel like your brain's at a calm place from coming out of, you know, that it's fully rested. There's like, I don't know, it hasn't been flooded with thoughts yet. You haven't gone on Facebook yet. You haven't checked your text messages. and You don't have all this other stuff in your brain yet. So I feel like it's almost easier to get into the meditative state as soon as you wake up. It is. And maybe maybe it's worthy. It's definitely worthy to challenge yourself to meditate when you are overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like... Yeah, I've just gotten in the habit of first thing in the morning. But definitely anytime, like, I go to meditation whenever I do feel stressed or something because yeah. it's such a good way to work through the thoughts and, like, to slow down. And that's why I'm always telling people, like, people I can always say, like, oh, you, you should try meditation. It's people that can tell they're being overwhelmed at that point in their life because it just allows you to sort through those ideas because you're working to find a calm and you're working to – be able to look at all those thoughts objectively rather than you know being like scatterbrained and overwhelmed and just by following all the information every yeah <laughs> and I, I mean it's hard being a human man especially in this day there's so much information coming at you every day and even like you know there's information from like reading yahoo news but there's also like information you're not even really getting like subconscious information when you're looking at facebook and these likes and these posts and this person's married and maybe you're not even like consciously thinking but these feelings and stuff are bubbling up oh should i be more like this or that and it's just like we're we're i think humans now are filled with more information and more anxiety yeah more anxiety more, than ever so it's more important than ever to start being mindful and using meditation i would argue but yeah well i, th I think it it goes back to um, maybe just society as a whole, right? And so in general, we have a sick society in a lot of ways in, in the ways that we emphasize, um, you know, like personal success and where our careers are and how much money we make and the objects we have and then how many likes you get on social media and all these things that are very superficial that are very easy to look. It's very easy to look over and get overwhelmed Um when you can, if you're mindful of it, you can almost dismiss the superficiality of the whole thing. Like you realize that it's not important at all because there are other things that are so much more important to you when you're more mindful of your thoughts and emotions. And I feel like meditation gives you this power back that this power that you always have the ability to have, but often people do not practice. And because meditation is a practice, it requires uh, a constant reassessment and engagement in the activity itself in order to bring yourself to that center where you can be so okay with your inner world that nothing in the outer world can affect you. And that that's the state that I know that I seek when I, I go into meditation. It's all about just trying to tap into the best version of myself. And I don't always tap into that. You know, yeah. I'm a human being, right? We, we have our moments where we're, we're less than what we'd like to be. But I do think that since I've been meditating, I've now been meditating very consistently for the past few months. Um, and I've, I've gotten into meditation. I got into meditation back in 2015. So it's, it's only been, uh, you know, a couple of years, almost three years. Um, but I was not super consistent with it initially, but I was really fascinated by it. And I eventually got to the point where I started doing it most days. And then since, since your advice of doing it in the morning, now I pretty much, I do it every day and I feel really shitty if I don't. Yeah. And Cause so once I think you make a habit of it, it's yeah, yeah. Yeah. And how many, how many weeks it's like what, like two or three weeks or something to, to create a habit. So if you just did it every day in the morning, uh, first thing, it, yeah, it, it 15 becomes minutes easy. isn't a lot. It's not. It's 15 minutes isn't a lot. And I do find that if you really want to get to that super deep place, the, the you know, the black hole, um, then you probably need at least 20 minutes. But 
you don't need to do that every time, right? It's not like that's not necessarily uh, the most benefit of meditation every time. Sometimes that 15 minutes is enough just to calm your brain down a little bit so that when you're about to go into whatever your next activity is, you're more easily focused and able to concentrate because you just spent the last 15 minutes focusing your mind on one singular thing, which is your breath. And although it jumped from place to place to place in between it, for the most part, you're able to bring it back to that presence. And you can apply that same mentality, that same presence, that same practice of focus and concentration into literally everything that you do. And that that's the part that really empowers me with meditation. And that's why I want to share it with the world. That yeah. I know it sounds Eastern philosophy <laughs> and it sounds like there's a you know some stigma to it of like, oh, you're one of those like woo-woo, hippie-dippy no, type it's, people. It's so good. And for me, it's like like you you said at one point, like, you know, you can find that peace, your center or whatever. For me, it's like, once you find that and you've gone there so many times, you understand that that place is within you and it's always all there. Times. And mm-hmm. so you can access that whenever you want. So you could be in jail and you could meditate. Like, you know, you could be in a horrible circumstance. You could be like in, in the worst circumstance, but if you can close your eyes, you could find yourself to that peaceful place. And you, and you know, then maybe you could be on a yacht. And if you're meditating on the yacht, you're still at that most peaceful place. Because when you're meditating, your surroundings aren't, you know, the, you find out that that beautiful place is within you and you can access it anytime, any place. So really, you know, you don't, the rich surroundings, those are the superficial things once again, exactly. which are maybe, you know, so maybe that's where you learn to derive, like what's the difference between ego? We were talking about like social media and stuff. Those mm-hmm. are the things your ego wants more likes, your ego wants, you know, fame and fortune and stuff, but like your soul or whatever it is that you access when you're meditating it could care less about those worldly things really. And you know, there's a place for those worldly things, but I think when you get in touch with your center and then you come back to the world, hopefully you can act in the world in a more positive way and you know, make, make things better rather than worse. Yeah, well, it, that, that makes me think about um, your diet. And I don't mean your food diet. I mean your, your media diet, your, uh, your soul food diet, you know, the things that are feeding yourself. So if you're constantly feeding your ego, expect your ego to be driving. If you're feeding your soul, expect your soul to drive it. And the soul is, you know, it's a lack of a better word. I don't have a better word to describe it, but I think most people know what you mean when you're saying your soul, that inner, that inner thing that really is the ultimate guide to you. And the more you listen to it, the more you tend to make good decisions. Uh, and the more you listen to your ego, the more you tend to make ego-driven visions, uh, decisions. So it, it, for me, I find that meditation does a pretty good job about mitigating my ego while simultaneously growing my spirit. And I think those that's a better way to feed your diet. Um, and of course, you can you can feed that same diet through the media you consume as well. So I tend to listen to music that is inspiring and that has a deep message. Why? Because I like to feed that aspect of myself. Um, but you could easily get lost and start feeding the ego side with music as well, right? There's always like multiple sides to it. You can get that, you know, money, bitches, and cars type music. And if that's all you're feeding yourself in your media diet, then yeah, that's probably going to be the thing that's bigger and that grows more. And the amount of time you spend on these individual activities or, um, just different wants or desires is going to influence how you perceive your world and how you live your life. So feed the things that are going to better yourself and starve the things that aren't, you know, starve the ego, starve, uh, the, the superficial aspects of society as a whole. And, uh, you know, we all want to be accepted, but you, you want to be accepted in a healthy way, not in, uh, the ego driven way of these superficial likes and, um, follows and all the social media stuff. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think as a society, I think we're probably just working through it right now. Like the internet's it's super a transition. new. Yeah, yeah. And when it's like, dude, I assume eventually they're going to have to be teaching kids like how to properly use the internet. I mean, right now you look at it, it's like completely changed the marketing and advertising industry. It's really put the ball in the artist court and like a lot of other industries just kind of open them. and but what i'm getting at is like it's like young no one knows what's going on right like so the biggest entrepreneur on the internet is like gary v and he's just a guy who figured out how to use instagram and twitter but it's like instagram and twitter are only uh you know 10 years old right so people are figuring out how to use these to make money but also i think the rest of us are struggling to figure out like how do we actually communicate properly on there and what is like 
you know, we're not used to this influx of like, you know, you, we're not used to being available all the time. Yeah. And you're being like, you're almost every thought is being judged or you're putting it out there Mm -hmm. to get a like or to get a thumbs up or a comment. And you know, it's almost like, you know, if you say something at a party and no one says anything back, you might feel something you might not. And someone might say the next thing, but if you say something on the internet and no one says anything and you're like, it shows you it's a 50 people saw this, no one said anything. (laughs) Like there's, there's some weirdness to it that I don't think our brains can properly digest yet. And maybe those apps will evolve, but I think definitely humans will will learn. Someone will write the book on like how to use these things, how to yeah, how like, to how navigate to use, it. Yeah, how to navigate this like new world that is the internet, which is amazing, but does have a lot of pitfalls in it mm-hmm. and things just to be aware of. And that's fine. And if you're mindful of it, that's great. But I just think there's a lot of people that aren't mindful of it and they don't understand that they're being manipulated by these negative aspects. Without a world. doubt. I mean, there's been constant studies that have shown that likes are literally dopamine hits to your brain. And we're not used to having such easy access to that dopamine hit. Usually, you had to work hard, put your pride into some piece of work, and then the result of the work is what gives you the dopamine hit. And if you're able to now just go out, post a fucking sentence on Twitter, get a bunch of likes and retweets, and you get all those dopamine hits, that's too easy. And then you're feeding the wrong thing. Like I said, feeding the ego more than you're feeding your soul and your spirit. Um, so I, I think one of the big one of the big takeaways that I took from meditation was just that uh, the superficial aspect to these things that oftentimes the majority of society is putting just a lot of favor in. And just because the majority of society puts a lot of favor in something doesn't mean that it's right. It doesn't mean that it's a good thing. And I, I think that's one of the bigger things is, is just regaining your sense of individuality back while also understanding the larger part that you play because i'm a big believer in the idea that that we are all serving each other on some level right and the best way for you to live your best life is to serve other people and um, i know that one of my favorite things to do is to bring out people's best versions of themselves to help them access their deeper potential um, in a way that i think not enough people in the world do because it's this me mentality of like, I got to get mine first. And I got, you know, if I let, if I let Joey uh, get higher than me, you know, then he's going to do better than me. And that's the ego driving it. But the real thing that's going to make you feel fulfilled would be if I'm like trying to better you making you be your best version of yourself, you're going to return the favor to me. It's not, it shouldn't even be about the returning the favor, but it's going to happen anyway. Yeah. It's just a product of it. I would say, yeah, people are grateful. Yeah, I would say that's what American culture in general is mm-hmm. missing is the sense of tribe or community. It's like it is really the me, 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 me culture. And everyone's yeah. just like it's it's missing this team aspect and the idea that like, you know, we are all connected. I believe that. I think it's oh, hard yeah. to see, but we're six degrees we're, of separation. Yeah, we're part. I think if you zoomed out, we're one big giant organism and we're just cells in it or something. Mm-hmm. It's, it's some, something crazy, but it's like. It, it weirds me out sometimes, you know, living in a city, you know, you're walking around, there's 3 million people, you see new people every day, but we're not, hi, hey, how you doing to strangers, like, if you say hello to a stranger, you're you're the weird one, you know, for you, yeah. for you trying to spread a little love and positivity in the world, and I, maybe it's because there's so much bad stuff in the world, but it just weirds me out that there's so many people, but it seems like everyone's in their own little box. Everyone's on their phone. And, you know, meanwhile, we're on a train. There's a hundred of us in this train car. No one's talking to each other. We're all talking to people a- across the world on a cell phone, which is cool. But at the same time, there's something weird about it. There's something that seems like sick. It's a little less idea. personal. Yeah. And it just seems like, you know, like the it just seems like there's this disconnect and everyone, mm-hmm. everyone kind of feels it. And it is that anxiety and fear of like judgment, but the, it's that judge fear of judgment because we never talk to each other. We never, I mean, I won't say we never talk to each other, but, but, a good, but we don't, a vast we don't majority talk to each don't. other in a way that matters. Like have you ever, have you ever met people where you talk to them and like the entire conversation is literally small talk. And if you ever wanted to breach anything deeper than small talk, they just won't give it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Those people, I consider them sims, you know, like they literally are so unconscious of their own behavior that they literally, they do, they don't realize that their life is entirely dictated by their emotions and their thoughts and their thoughts are not necessarily even really their true feelings, but because they identify with every thought that they have, they then become that. 
And that is like an unconscious person who is like, yeah, I mean, I guess technically conscious, but they, in almost every aspect of the way that they live their life and how they think and what they talk about, it certainly seems as unconscious or as random and chaotic as the universe itself. Whereas somebody who is more mindful and more conscious of their actions ends up having a lot more organization in this in the midst of this chaos, right? It seems the people that are the most mindful are the ones who have their shit together despite whatever might happen to them in the outside world because what? it's all about how you react to it. Yeah, and it's definitely like what you're getting at, like the Sims thing and stuff. It's like, <laughs> I like that analogy, but it is like... If you're not mindful, you're probably not aware of the fact that you're conforming and like, why are you the way you are? Like, do you dress that way because you honestly like that? Or did you see that on Instagram? And that's the cool thing. And that's the fad right now. And that's the trend. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, like you said, they're worried about judgment. They'd rather just fit in. They don't want to stand out. Certain people want to stand out and mm -hmm. like people like and part of that Standing can be out. the ego, too. Yeah. Standing out by itself is not always a good thing. But a lot of people, I think, just want to blend in and they just want to be <laughs> they want to be part of the normal. And, they, you know, mm -hmm. they don't want anyone picking on them like, hey, what, what are you doing? You're standing out because when you do stand out, you do get picked on or something. But it, so a lot of people are just looking, you know, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're just they're uh, squeezing themselves into these boxes. And I mean. It's not their fault. It's like our society. No, it's how we're raised. It's yes. conditioning completely. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. I think the whole idea, like most people, you know, like I'm an oddball for wanting to be an artist. I'm an oddball for not wanting to get married and buy a house and buy a car. But most people, it's like, yeah, you go to college, you get married, you buy a house, you have kids, you have a car, you work a job that you don't really like, mm -hmm. and then you die. And like, dude, if you really think about it, that's a fucked up existence because this is, it's we're, sad. we're very lucky if you look around like, man, we can do anything. Like, look at how special America is. But if your mind isn't open to that, it's like you've just been conditioned to think like, oh, I can only do this. It's like, what do you mean you can always only do that? Most people like, oh, yeah, you could go be a celebrity, right? You could become an actor. No, no, that's, you know, those people are lucky. It's yeah, like a lot want, of people have these the safe route. Yeah, a lot of people have these set beliefs that like this is their narrative. Like, oh, I was born to be this way. My parents were this person. Uh, I don't have free will, but the truth is everyone has free will. And if you look at all these people that we put on pedestals, if you look at their story, they got to where they were. They became such a standout person with all this praise because they didn't take the safe route, because they didn't conform, mm -hmm. because they were mindful of the conditioning that was happening to them. And they chose to go against the grain. And I, I mean, I think to me, that's the more fulfilling life. Without a doubt. I mean... I think it goes back to this, like different people have different definitions of success, right? So by no means do, does everybody have to go the artist route, the actor route, or, you know, being some you know, Elon Musk type figure, right? But achieving your ultimate potential should be your goal. Your version of what you believe your ultimate potential could literally be being a yoga instructor. But if you're such a good yoga instructor that you're bringing entirely new groups of people who otherwise maybe never would have tried yoga and had that that mind-blowing experience you end up being such an influence that you can influence you know entire classes of people at a time every day that's a very valid and beautiful existence because then if you're happy in your activity no matter what it is no matter what level you want to play on because i really do believe in this life you can play on almost every level you want to play on yeah, you can play sure. with the elon musks you can play with the average joe and you can play with you know, the bottom of the barrel. It, it's all up to, it's all up to you on some level. And then of course, there's always environmental factors. I'm a big believer that there are some people who are so far in the bottom that it doesn't matter. They could be Elon Musk and they wouldn't be able to pull themselves out because there's just too many things going against them. I really do believe that. I yeah. think we, we, in America, we put a little bit too much on personal responsibility in a way that it's unrealistic. Like, like we're expecting people to pull themselves out of these miracle situations where it's like, dude, if your dad, if your dad's a crack addict and slinging drugs, and then your mom's um, also a crack addict and an alcoholic, and you know, kind of like Logic's parents' upbringing, you know, how many of his siblings got out, you know, before he became successful? And maybe is now able to kind of bring them up with his own financial situation. He's he's an anomaly. You can't expect the entire world and the entire society to be the anomaly. I'm sorry. Just not no. everyone's Michael Jackson. No, not you, everyone's Michael Jordan. You can't expect it, can't. but you can use that as an example. Like, look, everyone has the same potential. Yeah, that's though. human potential. Yeah, 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 everyone has this ultimate human potential. Yeah. And going back to, like, yeah, you don't have to be an artist. You don't even have to do anything, like, out of the ordinary. But once again, like, 
it all being so inner it's all your mind like you mm-hmm. could work a very mundane job but if you have a mindful personality and you're happy and cheerful and the dude at the bakery and he's the nicest guy and he's dropping wisdom you know every time i go in there it's like it doesn't necessarily matter actually what you're doing but it doesn't how are you affecting people and when you communicate with people i don't care if you're a gas station clerk or you know you're my uber driver or if you're the ceo of a company if i have the conversation with you and it's a rich conversation that changes my life it really doesn't matter what your position is yeah to me it just like doesn't define yeah you. what really matters is the material the, the words the, the noises you're making your with your mouth like that's <laughs> all that's the whole thing and that goes back to your thoughts and you know controlling your brain and stuff so it all just stems back to like it all starts with your thoughts right it so does that's why meditation is like learning to manipulate those thoughts it helps you break the good. cycle yeah because often we find ourselves in these cycles and these loops that um I love how Westworld touch on, I know you haven't seen Westworld, but Westworld touches on the concept that in general human beings every day is just their loops. And so in the in the show, they have these androids that go through their loops of their storylines that the, um, the players, the actual humans who are in this world, um, are able to play with. And so depending on how you want to affect their loop, you know, you can come in and completely change how their day is going to go. Well, that same concept applies to human beings. So I argue that the people who I consider the Sims, and this is not disrespecting them either. I I see them as human beings, but I'm just like, well, you know, if you're unconscious, you're not really doing what you're, uh, what you actually want. You're just kind of a victim of circumstance. Then you kind of are a Sim. You're just, you're simulating a life rather than actually living it. Um, so again, it's not disrespect. I'm not like trying to shit on a, bu- a whole group Sims. of people. You Get know what I mean? Shit together, Sims. Yeah. Well, I'm not trying to shit on a whole group of people. It's simply that there are a lot of people that I think if they were able to bring a little bit of mindfulness to their life, then they would start living a life that they no, themselves I agree. would I agree with more. that. And I mean, I think that's that whole term, like waking up, people are yeah. waking up. And I think more than Stay ever, woke. people are, <laughs> yeah, people are getting woke. Yeah. Uh, I think, well, and I think it's on, it's everyone's job if you are hashtag woke or whatever if you're if you're semi-enlightened you know if, you, if you're better than you were a couple of years ago and you still see people that are where you bring were people mentally up. bring people up and, yeah. and just like make them aware of things because someone made me aware of all this stuff and mm-hmm. then I, it had a benefit of my life so then i want to make other people and now aware you're affecting other people yeah, yeah it, and it's, it becomes a cycle and you don't even have to you don't have to be pushy about it, it doesn't have to be it could be and you never know like one sentence could change someone's day one person could mm-hmm. overhear this maybe someone listens to this and they listen to the first five minutes of the podcast and they're like they turn it off they're like i'm gonna go meditate and like maybe that change like it doesn't you know that's your ego getting involved if you yeah. want to be like oh you got to get you know this is the way i'm gonna yeah. change the world it's like no you don't really you don't get to choose how you change people you don't you just, you just try to put out some good energy there and you try to empower and pe- people people and who positive. are listening and are willing to receive it they will receive yeah, it and they will apply it however change. they're gonna apply it yeah so no i i mean i completely agree i think ultimately um starting with meditation you are you're able to start at the very beginning of the loop there's no beginning of a circle but there is a point that influences the rest of the curvature of the circle depending on where your starting point is right so if your starting point is meditation then your further actions around this circle are going to develop into your actions in your day-to-day life. It's going to evolve into your character and how you just tend to react no matter what the situation is. And then you hit a certain point where no matter what's happening to you, you have this uh, more zen-like approach. Even though we're humans, our emotions are going to get the better of us from time to time. We are going to feel strong things. Some things are going to make us angry. That's okay. That's part of the human experience. That's part of being a person. Being a person, like you said earlier, it's hard. It's hard being a person, especially in today's day and age. But to be more mindful of your thoughts, to really think about your impact and what you have on other people, um, that's the important part. And I think that's what I want to drill home. And I I think that's how I want to end this podcast. But yeah, um, yeah, guys, be kinder to one another. Be more mindful of yourself and your actions and realize that uh, you aren't your job. You aren't, um, you know, the amount of things you have what you really are is what you are able to be to other people. Yeah. And you're whatever you want to be. And you really are in control of your thoughts, which control your emotions, which control your actions. So, I mean, I think this whole triggered society where people are teaching them like, Oh, it's his fault that you're mad. Like, no, I would say like, yeah, people piss me off. People say stuff, but Mm -hmm. it is my choice to react. It's my choice to get emotional. Mm -hmm. And when you meditate and you learn that you can control this, well, eventually you can get to the point where like you don't let things affect you you hear it you let it go in one ear and out the other and you choose not to react i think that's 
the powerful thing. The most powerful thing to me is just like, you know, being able to outsmart that brain that is so hairpin trigger. Yep. It's from clever. The get. It's just, it's programmed that way. Um, give You should give people some resources for like yeah. certain meditation. Yeah, without a doubt. So some of the big things that, um, the app that I use, but there are several of them out there. So I highly recommend just look at what the, the top meditation apps are. Um, but I use the Calm app. I know that Joey, you used Headspace at one point. Yeah. Um, those are great starting points. I use the Calm app now purely for the background noise and the fact that it is able to it puts in the calendar whether you meditated that day. So for me, it's more of a tracker and then an ambient music in the background. Um, but there is guided meditation where when you're first starting out, you really do need somebody to kind of tell you what's going on and like, all right, now focus on this and don't worry, your mind's going to wander. It's going to do this, but bring it back. That's helpful. I'm now at the point where I don't need a guided meditation. I'm sure there's benefits in doing it, but I'm pretty comfortable being able to just get in the state myself because I'm just used to it. But that took a long time for me to get there. So use, use assisted and guided meditation as much as you can. Um, there are also a ton of great books out there about yeah, meditation. Thousands of books, man. Seriously, so Go to many. Your library. Each library. Sam Harris like is a really good one. Um, he's got one called Waking Up, and it's all about spiritual enlightenment without necessarily, you know, uh, he's, he's kind of known for being like a atheist agnostic type person. Um, so he, he takes kind of like a trying to avoid any dogma or religion aspect to it. So if that's something that bothers you, you know, to do it, but there are plenty of them out there that if you are a religious or spiritual person and you want to tap into that and you don't mind that there are plenty of books out there like that as well. So definitely check out those resources. I'll link a couple of them in the, uh, des- the description of this podcast and uh, definitely definitely check it out guys and let me know give me some feedback let me know if you had never meditated before and you start meditating afterwards how does it affect you how do you feel a week two weeks a month later um reach out to me and let me know i want to know that uh the impact that i'm having you know maybe that's the ego driven part but uh but i certainly want to hear from you guys to see if this had ever opened you up or changed your mind because i know a lot of people tend to shut down when you change your life it will change your life Meditate, guys. Meditate and chill. Let's stop Netflix and chill. Let's meditate and <laughs> meditate chill. Meditate and chill. <laughs> Hashtag meditate and chill. <laughs> All right, guys. Talk to you later.